Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there and certainly had yourselves a great day. And I hope you all had a fantastic weekend as it comes to an end. Here to give you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise over the next couple days, basically the last bit of October. And then we'll speak on what's going to happen the first few to several days of November, even go as far out as maybe the second week of November. So what we'll do here is we'll talk about kind of what's going on right now first because it does tie into what's coming up over the next couple of days. Uh, first, we'll, we'll speak on a, a couple things as far as current conditions like in the south central U.S. and current temperatures because it's wild what kind of temperature gradient we have right now, especially on Texas and to Arkansas. It's unbelievable. It really is. And we're going to talk a little bit on that just because, you know, you, you know, guys, I like to nerd out with you folks when it comes to the weather. We'll talk about rain right now. We'll talk about what's coming up rain wise. There's a lot of areas in Louisiana. A lot of people um, are, are commenting, Mitch, when is it going to rain again? Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit on that as this front is really on the move on now and you will have a chance at some rain. We'll speak on that. We'll talk about how cold it could potentially get for the central and eastern U.S. over the next uh, several days. Who has a risk of their first frost of the season? Who has freeze warnings, uh, freeze watches right now? We'll speak on all that. We'll speak on uh, what's coming up weather-wise for the northeast, as you guys will certainly uh, have another wave of moisture that's going to move in. You can see on your screen right now, areas of northern Maine could pick up several inches of snow. And then we'll speak on even more snow for the Great Lakes. Not only is the Great Lakes machine going to kick up for Lake Superior, pretty almost all the Great Lakes, but we have a piece of energy that's going to round the base of this of this trough over areas of the eastern U.S., almost like a clipper. And uh, this could bring snow even away from the Great Lakes, like central Wisconsin, areas of Minnesota, um, uh, dare I say even Chicago, before, I mean, maybe tomorrow, really into Halloween, the 31st. So... Uh, this is, there's a lot of small to medium things going on. We're going to speak on all of it, and then we'll cap it off by talking about the potential for a storm the second week in November. We'll speak on that, and we'll give you a big update on the tropics also in this video. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. My cat has joined me in this video behind my head. If you see the little blob behind me, that is my cat. Do you see any movement? That is my cat, Stormy. She likes to hang out in here with me, and she's the only cat that behaves when I let them stay in here without moving. She just chills in the background. So if you guys got anything I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so, too. Let's get rolling. Sorry for the three-minute intro. I need to start cutting them down just a little bit more. But this is what's going on right now. A lot of rain moving across areas of the Mississippi Valley, the Ohio River Valley. Even have some cold rain falling in areas of the Midwest. Uh, my, my guy Steven up here in the UP of Michigan says there's been some light snow falling in areas of the UP today. Still got some flurries kind of flying around the high plains and still snowing in southern Colorado. Thank you all folks who, who have shared the reports for your individual location out there. They mean the world. It, it really does. It's, it's awesome just how we continue to build the family on this channel. It, it, it really just, I feel like it's different than others and it's not a knock on anybody else, but just just thank y'all for making the channel what it is. It's really cool just hear, seeing all, everybody's comments and everybody talking to one another. And it just makes you smile every time I see it. It really is awesome. Southeast, uh, very warm. It's in the 80s at my location here in central South Carolina. And there's not really any rain falling. But, uh, yeah, this is what's going on right now. And, you know, the reason I'm showing you this is just because this ties into to really what's coming up over the next 12 to 24 hours. But let's talk about watches, mornings, advisories, things like that. Okay, you have freeze watches in this light blue, so they extend j almost down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I think this is Dallas-Fort Worth, these two counties right here. So technically, as of right now, no freeze watches, but I expect this to extend further south over the next 12 to 24 hours, where I think your next couple mornings will be colder than probably tomorrow morning. We'll speak on that. Freeze warnings. First, really widespread freeze for these uh, purple colors right here. I expect all of this to continue to meander and shift east and southeast day by day, basically, as the cold air continues to lag behind this cold front, but inevitably is coming. Now, you look up here in the top of the country here in Maine, winter weather advisories. Now, the snowfall totals have increased for you folks in Maine. I know I got some people who tune in from Maine. Thank you all so much. Uh, that means means the world. Uh, I mean... I don't know what your winter storm criteria is up there in the northern counties of Maine, but I'm sure it's even it's pretty high. 
Uh, but I mean, the totals are starting to get to that half a foot range, widespread half a foot or, or higher total ranges. So we'll speak on that, but this is watches and warnings. But the big story is a lot of people getting their first freeze of the year um, coming up over the next couple mornings. Guys, I want to show you this. This is very impressive. I'm going to geek out with you guys for a minute. These are real time temperatures in Texas right now. Incredible. All right. It's in the low 90s, guys, in South Texas. In Amarillo, it's below, just about, it's at or just above or just below freezing. Very, very impressive temperature gradient. The heart of Texas is chilly, but you get down to the coastal regions of Texas, South Texas, it is still warm. This front just moved through like Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, but, you know, just south of the boundary, it's it's almost 90 degrees. And what's what's crazy about this? And, you know, Arkansas is the same way, guys. I mean, Arkansas is another state, right? Um, the front moved through Little Rock, you know, dropped down to the 50s. But, you know, southeast Arkansas, you're still hanging on to the 80s for dear, dear life. But you're up in the Ozarks and just uh, northwest Arkansas, you're in your 30s. So one corner of Arkansas in the 30s, the other corner down here in the 80s. So it's very impressive. Uh, let me know uh, how, how cool it's been throughout the day in your location. But it's always cool to really see this. On, on real time temperatures, but the seed on radar is even cooler. So this is the radar out of Houston, right? Right at this moment, well, 535, the time I'm making this video, um, you see this line moving right here, moving southeast. This is the city of Houston. This is the cold front um, visible on radar. So, you know, for example, as of right now, if you're in Houston, you're warm. But as soon as this cold front moves through, the temperatures will probably drop like a rock. Now, I'm not saying they're going to drop from the 80s to the 40s in like 30 minutes. It's not quite that tight of a gradient. But when this cold front moves in, you'll probably know it. This is heading all the way down to the coastline. So the coastal regions right now are hanging on to this warmer air. And here's the cold front, though, moving in. I can almost guarantee you it's much cooler up in College Station than it is in Houston right now. Significantly cooler. So pretty wild stuff, guys. This, this cold front me, means business. The true core of the cold air really lags a little bit behind it. It's You can't compare this gradient to um, like the Christmas cold front, the, you know, the cold front that moved through a couple of days before Christmas in 2022. But it, but it is pretty, pretty wild. You know, Memphis, you warmed up big time uh, today. But, you know, since then, you, you've dropped into the 50s this evening. So pretty wild stuff. So. Um, I want to show you the potential low temperatures over the next couple days, uh, just for you folks, especially in the southern regions. But, you know, cold air teens for lows uh, tonight with snowpack, you're probably going to drop to around zero degrees in Denver. Uh, out in the plains of eastern uh, Colorado, single digits, very cold temperatures. Probably, there might be some records to get broke, uh, broken. In fact, uh, there might be. I, I mean, I'm not going to pretend to know. I know what the record low for every location in the United States is, but I imagine we're flirting with it. Um, this is low temperatures tonight, 30s for um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, deep into the 20s in Amarillo, uh, Oklahoma City into the 20s, Shreveport. The cold air has not really got deep into Louisiana yet, but just the 40s and upper 30s in Little Rock. Uh, you're going to get a freeze in St. Louis and and um, Kansas City, and certainly well above freezing in these areas. Chicago will get right at the freezing, and then the cold front, um, just continues to move. And then I think this is when the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I think Tuesday morning, Halloween morning, you guys will, will flirt with uh, the freezing mark, if not get there. Very chilly morning all the way to the Gulf Coast. Okay. But kind of a a system, the shortwave helps to aid in bringing even more cold air, like another shot of cold air. So areas in like eastern Montana, Tuesday morning, Halloween morning, um, the Dakotas, I mean, single digits below freezing actual air temperatures. This is the National Weather Service, too. This isn't just one crazy model run. Uh, I mean, just frigid. Even for the heart of, um, even for like December and January standards, this is pretty cold. But, you know, it's it's definitely cold. But then, you know, it begins to moderate some. But, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, for some of these areas in the Deep South, you're going to get your first free. Certainly Little Rock, Memphis, um, up here in northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, Nashville, uh, all of Kentucky. Um, yeah, Dallas-Fort Worth area is going to uh, probably get to around freezing. Shreveport, northern Louisiana. Yeah, I mean, then you're going to have another cold morning for the 2nd of November for your Thursday. 
And uh, then you start to get into your Friday, guys. And, I mean, it starts to moderate then, but still remains cold up here. But nothing too crazy from what we see from early November standards. But, yeah, guys, we'll talk about the cold uh, now for the eastern U.S. And um, we'll, like, we'll, we'll just look at the national blend of all models as far as actual the progression of the temperatures. And, you know, this is this afternoon hanging on to that warm air from Mississippi all the way to Virginia for dear life. Uh, if you're, and I speak like on behalf of people who actually like the warm air. I, I don't mind it, guys. I'm, you know, there was a time where I hated hot days in October and November, um, especially November, December, and obviously deeper you get into the cold months. But, you know, a warm day in October, it isn't that big of a deal. You know, I was out and about this afternoon. I did went on a walk, worked out, and did some things. Washed the car. Uh, me and my little girl washed the car, and it was nice out there. Just embracing the warm. The warm air from the sun because I know that oh, it's inevitable that's going to cool down whether we see winter weather or not and I know that cooler days are literally right on our doorstep so anyways rambling at this point we get into tomorrow morning here's that cold air moving in not too cold yet for the Ohio Valley and and uh, areas of the mid-south but it's coming and then look at our October 30th okay the temperature gradient is going to be very impressive. It's like the, the Appalachian Mountains is going to be the dividing point of the mountains. This is going to be one of those scenarios where the mountains actually help in aiding and lagging this cold air um, from getting into the Carolinas. But it's not going to it's not going to stop it. But tomorrow, another warm day. But it'll feel drastically different, for example, in like Jackson, Mississippi, Meridian, um, tomorrow afternoon compared to what it feels like this afternoon. Okay, but you keep this moving, guys, and, uh, you know, you're still in the 80s, uh, almost in Atlanta. Looks like the cold front's right on your doorstep tomorrow evening. But, you know, Augusta, all of Florida, yeah, I mean, up to Raleigh, Richmond, still getting into the 80s. Charlotte will hit 80 again. And then this cold begins to ooze kind of east of the Appalachian Mountains. Okay, and listen, if you're, <laughs> if you're a meteorologist in South Carolina and Georgia, and maybe even eastern areas of North Carolina for Halloween for the 31st. Man, it is going to be tough. I think where I live, I live in Columbia, which is right here, um, right in the heart of South Carolina. It's going to be a tough forecast day, for example. You know, you're going to have, I think South Carolina will be a state the 31st where you'll have high temperatures like in the 50s in the upstate of South Carolina, but in the upper 70s in the low, low, uh, low, uh, low country of South Carolina. But certainly in the Northeast, a very chilly day. Very chilly last day of, of uh, October. And then uh, really the only state that's fully submerged in the warm air still is Florida. But, you know, I think it'll be pretty wild out there. Uh, certainly spooky in the sense of um, colder air moving in. But by the time, guys, we wake up to our first day of November, which for me is the beginning of Christmas season. Now, I know not everybody. I know some people get very very upset at that they're like man you got to wait till thanksgiving nah nah i don't in fact um this friday coming up me and my girls i'm gonna kind of make it a, a night it's gonna be a, a very nice evening gonna go get pizza some ice cream and then we're gonna come home and and then this coming friday just put all the christmas stuff out so looking forward to it looking forward just the little things you know guys um but you know the the morning of november 1st it feels drastically different out there Okay, and then we look at high temperatures for November 1st. I mean, only in the 50s and 40s, even as far south as, as the south. So pretty wild stuff, guys. Very chilly temperatures. And then here it comes. You know, a lot of these deep south and southeast areas have a threat for their first freeze, even like Columbia, Augusta, down to Macon, Georgia, down to southern sections of Alabama, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, Meridian, and Nashville for sure will get below freezing. Asheville, uh, Charlotte, oh, Raleigh. And I know I'm just mentioning these southern uh, cities, but you know, certainly areas north of this will get well below freezing. Okay. And then another chilly day for our Thursday. And then it starts to moderate some. Okay. So yeah, guys, um, a lot of folks are wondering about rain in the Southeast and I'll show you how this could potentially unfold as we get into this evening. And then we get into the overnight hours. Some rain will try to enter Northern sections of Louisiana. And I think by the time we're waking up tomorrow, I think you'll have a solid shield of rain falling in northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, some rain in northern Mississippi, certainly waking up to some soggy conditions, maybe in the Nashville, Kentucky, uh, and up in the state, into the state of Kentucky region. Still raining in eastern Texas, just, just won't stop raining in Texas, but 
Um, the thing that's unfortunate about this, guys, for our folks in like the rest of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Panhandle, Florida, is unfortunately this cold front turns into really a dry cold front for you folks. And about the best you're going to get tomorrow afternoon, evening, is some showers along this cold front that will be moving in. And I just don't think it's going to add up to much. But maybe sometime Monday night into, into Tuesday morning, we could get some more light to moderate rain that develops in Louisiana. And in fact, it really does get going. You know, you stop it here. You know, this is the morning of the 31st. Okay, the next couple mornings. And we got some decent rains falling across the Bayou of Louisiana, southeast, southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi. Some showers uh, trying to get going in the Carolinas. And then, you know, some people wondering about trick-or-treating or whatever you got going on Tuesday evening. And, um, you know, it you got a shield of rain kind of working out of Atlanta, working through areas of southeast Alabama, working into the upstate of South Carolina, the Piedmont, North Carolina. So we, so we definitely got to watch this. This this could potentially affect some plans, but we'll certainly watch it. So how much rain from this can we expect? Well, you know, the blend of all models for Louisiana ain't going for a whole lot, but... And I would see if the H report model is correct, we could get a little bit more than what this is showing. But I definitely think we will get, in most of the state of Louisiana, enough rain. I know this is going to be like an insult to misery, but maybe maybe enough rain to, to make the ground wet. Um, but the further you get northern into Louisiana, the, the more rain, the more appreciable rain you're going to get. Um, but, you know, Mississippi will be a state where you need to get into the northern portion of the state to see some decent rains. And Alabama and Georgia... Not sure. We need to watch that little wave of precipitation as we get into the last day of October. So, speaking of our folks in the Northeast, um, a lot of moisture moves in overnight tonight. Okay. And then a big time snow event for late October standards begins to move in. This is about 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. And we just got a cold rain in most of the Northeast. But if you go up to the far northern sections of New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and of course these higher elevations, well, certainly mixed to or just flat out turn to snow or some kind of wintry mix and in the Adirondacks, the White Mountains or, you know, really anywhere. I think it's you got the White and the Green Mountains, I think, in Vermont, New Hampshire. I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But, man, if, you know, if you're in Maine, uh, Central, even Central Maine, but Northern Maine for sure, um, if you're in this section of Maine, you know, you got a, a quick hitting, dare I say, like snowstorm that moves in. Okay, really gets kicked up tomorrow morning, lasts throughout the morning into the early afternoon, and then it, then it tapers off tomorrow evening. And then behind it, you start to get some backside energy that flies through with some more cold air now working to the surface. And this is when we could get some convective snows that might get popping off out of southern Ontario over the Great Lakes, might get enhanced over Lake Erie or Ontario. You could get some snow squalls. I wouldn't use the word squalls. you got to watch it. Could get some snow showers, rounds of snow showers that kind of make their way through the Finger Lakes, southern tier of New York State. Uh, I think it's very possible as we get into tomorrow evening and then overnight tomorrow into Tuesday morning. And, and then we just get flat out lake effect snow popping off Lake Erie. So watch out Erie, areas south of Buffalo. Um, here it goes. You know, this is the final frame of the HRR model. Look at this lake effect action popping off Lake Erie. So we'll get a little bit more detailed on that when we know more details. Um, for sure. So rainfall from this, uh, you know, a lot of this is going to fall in the form of snow up here in northern Maine, but everybody else's is rain, a cold rain at that too. It's going to be a just a raw cold rain from this over the next 24 to 36 hours. Um, so yeah, uh, certain areas, especially in southern New England, it, it's going to definitely get, I mean, there's a consist, consistency with models that you guys are going to get a half inch to an inch of rain and areas of southern New England for sure. But snowfall from this, guys, I mean, this has increased since this morning. Four to six, maybe seven. Someone's going to get eight, nine. Maybe somebody gets a foot of snow in some of these higher hills and elevations in northern Maine. But certainly accumulating snow. Caribou, you're going to get your first. I don't know if this is your first accumulating snow of the year. I think it is. Um, but you're definitely going to get it over the next 24 hours for sure. So let's talk about the Great Lakes. Uh, rounds of moisture is moving out. More substantial moisture i think as the last little bit of main blob of moisture moves in i think that this could switch to a little bit of snow in northern michigan for sure so if you're in northern michigan not the up but just the northern sections of michigan you know up here in the northern sections of interstate 75 the gaylord region um i think you get some backside snow 
for sure. But the bigger storyline after this is really the Great Lakes machine that kicks going. And you know, not everybody's going to see accumulating snow from this. Certainly, you guys know better than I do, Stephen. You know, anybody else is tuning in from the UP. You guys know how this works up here. You got to be probably tucked in close to the lake or just off the lake to really see it. A lot of lake effect snow. But I think everybody in the UP is going to at least see some snow flying around. It's just who's going to get the substantial snowfall totals. But, you know, we're, we're getting into the overnight hours. We're waking up tomorrow morning. You're going to get some banding of snow coming off Lake uh, Lake Superior. almost called it Lake Erie. And uh, this continues throughout the morning hours. Some of these will be intense bands. Some of these will probably, you'll hear some cracks of thunder, maybe some flashes of lightning out there. And we're getting into tomorrow afternoon. And some of this bands of snow makes it all the way into maybe southern Michigan. Okay, and then we get into tomorrow evening. And this continues, guys. And then we have a short wave at the base of this trough that swings through. Okay, this isn't like effect snow. This swings through, all right? And at this point, we'll stop it here. This is around midnight, Monday night. And we get some light to moderate snow, maybe at times heavy, that swings out of Minnesota and then it gets going into a good, a good section, a good chunk of Wisconsin. Even some snow showers into Iowa. And uh, this piece of energy flies all the way down into Chicago Halloween afternoon. Okay? And it looks like you've got a band of snow and I would say that if this band is as, is as intense as what the, this run, run of the HRRR model is showing, this shows a pretty intense band of snow making it all the way down to Chicago. I mean, even south of Chicago, guys. I mean, down to Juliet. I mean, down to Gary. Uh, I mean, maybe all the way down to Lafayette. I mean, Danville. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be an interesting setup. I think the last time you saw snow... On Halloween in Chicago was what probably 2000. What was it? What was that weird, crazy storm? Um, ah, man, I am 2014. I think it was where we had that weird upper level low that flew to the Great Lakes all the way down in the southeast. But, anyways, guys, this is going to be a wild little setup. And, uh, you know, are we going to have a huge consolidated area of snow? Not sure, but I mean, this is the far out as the H R model goes. And, Sure enough, show snow over Chicago, snow entering like the other side of Lake Michigan into the Grand Rapids region. Um, you still got heavier squalls of, up here in the UP. So it'll be interesting. This is basically a short wave piece of energy rounding the base of this trough. And this is snow between now and just tomorrow morning. Okay. And uh, already it's adding up into the um, this peninsula that sticks out. Guys. My, my guy, Steven, told me what this is called, uh, and, and I'm brain farting what it's called. Um, can, yeah, I'm not even going to try to butcher it. Um, but And that's what that's what how always happens, guys. You guys always help me in the comments. Just keep trying to help me. And every time I start the video, um, if I think about it too much, it'll mess up the flow. But, that, you know, this peninsula that sticks out, that's probably the breadwinner always from these lake effect snow events. But um, I do remember this. Uh, I think one of you guys told me how to pronounce this town. I think it's Houghton. Um, you know, I think that you'll be an area that um, sees a little bit of accumulating snow overnight. But I think, you know, if, if we're watching a real area, it's this area kind of south of the peninsula that sticks out right into here. Could definitely see some accumulating snow just tonight. Okay, and then some snow is possible around Marquette. You guys could see an inch of snow overnight. It's very possible, but it's really after this period. Once we start to get into the next 24 hours, by the time we get into Tuesday morning, I mean, this is when it really starts to add up for the peninsula point south in this little region right here. You got two favorite areas, this area of the, of the UP of Michigan right here, okay, and then this area over here, and then it's starting to pop off Lake Michigan, okay, uh, so very interesting to see how this unfolds. You know, Ironwood, you guys could see some snow. Well, yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Onto Nagan, onto Nagan, onto Nagan. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, you guys will definitely, uh, I think I think you pronounce this one Baraga. I think somebody helped me with that. Uh, you guys are in this region. You guys are going to see some snow. I'm trying, guys. You know, I, I always try to give it a go. You guys are definitely going to see your first several-inch snow event of the season. Marquette will see some snow, but I think once you get uh, probably just east of Marquette, more heavier snow will fall. Okay, But you see all the snow right in here? This is from that short wave that moves through 
And this is snowfall potential for like the last day of October into the morning of November. And here it is. This is the National Weather Service dumping a couple inches of snow down here in the central and southern Wisconsin. Madison, what is that, Janesville, Milwaukee potentially, um, La Crosse, uh, was that Platteville? I think that's how you'll pronounce it. Dubuque. I mean, you might get a little snow down here in Iowa. Um, but, man, there might be a stripe of accumulating snow right through this region, guys. Um, I mean, going for just a dusting of snow in Chicago, a little bit of snow down here off the uh, far southern tip of Lake Michigan. we got to watch this, guys. Maybe an inch of snow in Minneapolis, okay, with this system that moves through uh, tomorrow night into the last day of October. So I'm very, very fascinated to see what happens with this and don't want to leave my folks you know in the dakotas left out with this because you guys could definitely see another round of snow in northern minnesota you guys could see a couple inches of snow up here from these light to moderate snow that moves through and just some squally kind of weather that moves through the dakotas probably sometime tomorrow afternoon evening but not a big deal for you folks so moving into the future so I want to show you after this cold blast that we just got done talking about the winter weather, this is the 6 to day, six to 10 day temperature outlook from November 4th to the 8th. So it does show the temperatures moderating, especially for the western U.S. In fact, it's already in the process of doing so. But it hangs the Great Lakes region in the northeast, hangs you guys on to just average temperatures, even slightly below average for the Great Lakes region and up in the northern sections of northeast. I am going to be fascinated to see how much this changes over the next couple of days, but, you know, saying that the above average temperatures are going to return from the plains, are going to return from the south. Um, but we'll see how warm that is. I wouldn't freak out or anything. Um, as far as if you're, you know, if you're a cold weather fan, as far as how much, you know, rain's expected, six to 10 day te uh, precipitation outlook, this is kind of everywhere, guys. It's hard to figure out um, this, but I'm just showing it to you. Um, but, you know, does indicate some sort of ridge in here and then energy flying at the, the top of this ridge, but it's going to be tough to figure out. What, what I can tell you guys is this is the trough digging down right now. And if you look at this darker area uh, blue, that is our vigorous short wave that's going to move through the upper Midwest. This is going to attempt to become a storm system of the Northeast, but it never fully does. There's, there's just the energy does not connect. There was some model runs a few days back that was indicating maybe a big time kind of coastal low, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. So this moves on out and there's that ridging, kind of a zonal ridging flow. The ridging is really out west. It's more so a zonal flow that develops over the central and eastern U.S. All right. But then we get into early next week. It's getting kind of far out. We have a signal for troughing showing up over the central to eastern U.S. again. And you ask Mitch, what does troughing mean? For now, just think of that as the potential for some sort of storm system, cold front, below average temperatures. And the big blue blob on your screen is a trough. Um, and then the orange on your screen or red you see on your screen is a ridge. All right, this sets up. And this is 10, 11, 12 days out. Pretty unreliable time frame. But there is a signal for this to be over the eastern U.S. sometime in the second week in November. So we need to watch this. Okay, this to me, this tells me Maybe another cold front, shot of cold air, maybe some sort of storm system. The EPS, the European Ensemble, same thing. This trough moves on out, a little bit of a zonal flow, maybe just even a flat out ridge that builds over the eastern U.S. And then there's a big trough that shows up 10 days out based off the European Ensemble. So there's some agreement there in the long range from both the European Ensemble and the uh, and then the GFS Ensemble. So... I mean, and even, you know, you look at the European and that's a pretty, that's a pretty stout signal right there. Okay. So you yeah, ask Mitch, what's all this mean? Well, to me, if you look at the actual, like just the runs of the GFS and the European it tells me that I think that we'll enter a more quieter period. Okay. Um, and then I want to watch some kind of activity that gets going sometime next weekend. Okay. And then I want to watch sometime 10 days out. You got a lot going on. You got an idea that we're going to have some interesting things going on in the tropics. You got cold air starting to ooze down. You got some blue showing up in West Virginia and Virginia. And then we get some sort of storm system 10 days out. Some snow for PA. It's not a forecast. It's not a forecast. Um, but some cold air kind of getting in. And then here comes some kind of big storm system right here. 
288 hours out, guys. This is two weekends from now. Very unreliable time frame, not a forecast, but I'm just showing you the signal on the GFS run, and then I'll show you on the European run. Now, this wants to bring some massive Appalachian early season snowstorm for areas of the eastern U.S., and this even brings a snowstorm to New York City, to Boston. But, guys, if, if you're tuning in from that area, please do not get excited over this. We will see this a million times this winter, and then we'll probably get disappointed uh, nine times out of ten. So um, it's just hoping for that, that not that nine times out of ten that works out. But there is some sort of storm signal, and you see it on the European too, guys. We get past what's going on over the next couple of days. You know, we get into this weekend. All right, it's Saturday. This is Sunday. There's something kind of going on over here. Not much, though. It heads on out. And then here comes a big storm system, but it's much warmer and, and moves in much quicker than the GFS. Shows a big storm system middle of the week, not this week, but next week. And it looks like all the cold air is up in Canada, okay, with some backside cold air that moves in behind it. We will continue to watch this, okay, but um, I don't want to talk it to death because we don't know a whole lot. But this is the snowfall ensemble through the next 15 days and it does show a signal even after this snow that's coming up over the next couple of days to the great lakes of northern maine it does show some kind of signal that begins to build a little bit further south but as of now um nothing is forecasted that's too far out but we'll continue to watch we'll give me an update on the tropics the latest information um yep latest information Guys, I don't even think this is going to become a depression if it does. Uh, it's not really worth speaking on much because a cold front's coming and it's going to basically push whatever this is on out. I'm not going to speak on this. But this, we're going to have a huge broad area of energy that's probably going to get going and try to gradually develop. So this has a 10, uh, sorry, a 20% chance of developing in the next seven days in this yellow area down here. We need to watch this for our neighbors down here in the Caribbean islands, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, anybody trying to vacation in November. Uh, Cuba, we need to watch this. We really do. Um, for now, we look at the latest GFS from lunchtime. It does show some spin that gets going down here. A lot of tropical moisture that's kind of shunted down to the Caribbean because of this troughing over the eastern U.S. And eventually, it does get this broad area of energy going. Okay, here's that low pressure. You think it's about to move right into the Central America, and it could. In fact, I would argue it has a better chance to do so. But, you know, for you folks in Central America, you need to watch this. This could bring a late season tropical threat for you folks. But what the GFS does instead is it climbs this into the Western Caribbean, makes landfall in eastern Cuba as a hurricane, flirts with the idea of making landfall as a hurricane in South Florida, and then brings a hurricane to the Bahamas. And then it heads on out to sea. Okay, so... That's one crazy run from the GFS, but what I can tell you is there's been some consistencies of something. These over the last few runs, I mean, there's consistently showing something in the medium term down here. Okay, you look at the European, which is always going to take more of a conservative route, and you'll see it coming up. We get into this weekend. Here it is. There's that energy right here. There's that low pressure. Got a lot of tropical moisture down here, but it just pushes it right into Central America. Doesn't do anything like what the GFS is showing. At this point, all we can do really is look at the ensembles, and they are everywhere. This is between now and the next five, six days. Shows a signal for a low pressure developing, but it has no idea where it wants it to go. So I know that wasn't a lot on the tropics, but there is just nothing concrete that we can really figure out quite yet. And models are absolutely everywhere on if it does form, where is it going to go? So. You guys have a great rest of your weekend as it rounds off. Um, I'll be with you guys in the morning. Chances are I will not have a video over the next couple evenings. So I think the next evening video I probably will ha have is probably November 1st. Um, but I will definitely continue to pump out the content over the next couple mornings. But, you know, if I forget to say it, thank you all for a great month of October. It was definitely one of the slower months of the year. But we made it through. Uh, picked up growth. Picked up new members. And uh, just thank you all for the support. God bless all y'all. Have a great night. And I'll talk to you in the morning.